Welcome! In this series of short videos, we will look at topics with the PowerBasic Windows Compiler. Today we will look at creating an image generating countdown application. Today we are going to be doing some more work with graphics controls and images. The dialog you see on screen here at the moment is to allow a user to be able to select a background image. Having selected this background image, it will be displayed on the graphics control on the right hand side of the dialog. The user can then select a date from the date control. This is to be the target date to which we are going to count down to. Next, the user can select a text colour. This will be the colour the text appears on the graphics control. And then finally, we are giving the user an apply to image button. This will apply the text on top of the graphics control. Once the user is happy with what they have selected, they can then click the save image button at the bottom of the dialog. This will extract the image from the graphics control and save it as a JPEG. So I have used AI to generate four images which we are going to be using as our backgrounds. In order to allow flexibility, the application will scan the folder and check to see how many JPEGs it can find in the folder. And it will display the names of these JPEGs in the drop down list. So if you wish more images on the drop down list, you merely have to add more images to the folder. Each image is 1024 by 1024 pixels. So let's have a look at the code. Our first task is to populate the drop down list for the background images. So if we go into the callback function of our dialog. So in the initialize dialog section of our callback function, the event handler, we are going to make a call to a new function, one that will load our image list. We are passing this new function to parameters, the handle of the dialog and the handle of the combo box that we wish to populate. So here is the skeleton of our new function, load image list. Our first task will be to reset the combo box. Resetting the combo box is always a good idea when you are creating a new function. This allows the function to be called from elsewhere in the code, ensuring that none of the previous data will be still sitting in the combo box. So we are going to be using the dirt dollar command to sweep through our current folder and look for files with the extension jpeg. We populate the str file variable by using dirt dollar. It takes a single parameter, this will be the name of the folder we are currently in and the extension we are looking for, in this case JPEG. While the value returned by this is not blank, we will then add the value to the combo box and then cycle on to the next file to be looked for. Once we run out of files to find, our combo box will be populated. So if we run our application now, we should have four entries on the combo box. And we do indeed. Each of the files is now appearing with its file name on our combo box. Our next task is to allow the user to select one of these entries on the combo box, and we will then load up that file and display it on our graphics control. So back to the callback function, the event handler. And here is the section of the callback function that handles the events on our combo box which is the background image list. If this is clicked, the first thing we want to do is to get the text that is currently selected. As this combo box is single select only, you can only select one item on the list, we can use a control get text quite easily. We are using the handle of the dialog and the current control, which in this case is the CBO background image. And we are sending that to a string variable called str image. This identifies the name of the file we wish to load. Next, we are going to make use of one of the functions in a library we have previously created. This is a function called load image file. As you can see, this takes four parameters. First of all, we specify the image we wish to load. Next, it will return the width and the height of that image. And finally, it will return a handle to the bitmap which it's loaded the image into. So as we've used a few new variables here, we'll need to create these at the top of our function. So now that we've created these new variables, let's have a look at the beginning of our code where we're calling our include files. We're going to be pulling in three libraries here. 
First of all, a GDI Plus Startup Library. This contains the routines for opening up GDI Plus and closing it down once we've finished. Our second library is dedicated to loading a JPEG in as a bitmap. And our final library is to do the reverse to take a JPEG from a graphics control and save it to disk. So if we go back into our callback function. So on the assumption that the load image file routine will actually find our image and convert it to a bitmap, it will return the value true. Next, we want to use a graphics attach command to specify the graphics control on which all the subsequent operations are going to work on. We've set this to use the readable option, as this will allow us to update things much quicker, and then at the end we'll do a graphics redraw to allow the user to see the completed image. Next, we're going to use the graphics copy to copy our bitmap onto our graphics control, and then we can tell Power Basic that we've finished handling that bitmap to allow it to free up the resources. And finally, we will redraw the graphics control to the user. So let's try running that application now to see how far we've got. We can go to our drop down and select one of the options. And there we have our graphics control populated with the image. However, as you can see, the image on our graphics control is only part of the full image. This is because the image is larger than the graphics control in pixels. We need to find a way of reducing the size of the image so that the whole entirety of it appears on our graphics control. So we need to use another graphics command. And this graphics command is the graphics stretch page command. This allows us to resize the bitmap to fit the graphics control. It takes a number of parameters. We need to give it the handle to the bitmap. We need to give it the handle of the graphics control itself and two additional parameters, the mix copy source and half tone. The half tone will allow Power Basic to actually reduce the size of it without losing much in the way of detail. So let's try running the application again now to see if that's made a difference. And we select the same entry from the drop down and we can now see we're seeing the entire image. So if we select one of the other ones, and it's appearing quite happily. So we've successfully taken a JPEG file from the folder and displayed it in our graphics control, adjusting the size of the bitmap to fit the graphics control itself. So that's stage one. The next thing we want to do is to work out our dates. The date control will allow you to select dates quite happily but the next thing we need to do is to capture the dates from the date control. So it's back to the callback function. So at the top of our callback function, we're going to create three new variables. The first one we're declaring is static. This will be the end date that the user has selected. The next two are pointers to user defined types. These are used so that when the notification comes in that the user has changed something on the date control, we can determine what they've actually done. So let's have a look at the notify event in our callback function. In here, we're going to populate, first of all, one of the pointers. And then we're going to do a test to see what's been clicked upon. This will allow you to put multiple date controls on the screen and be able to determine which one the user has selected. Now that we've determined which date control the user has selected, we now have to determine what they've actually done. And we're interested in a date time change. Next, we can populate our end date by picking up the information from our pointer for the day, the month, and the year. I'm going to be using the UK format of dates throughout this application. However, if you use the American format, feel free to actually move these around. So this will allow the code to pick up when the user has actually changed the date. However, when the application loads initially, we need to set the date as being the current day. So we'll pop back to our initialization dialog. And I'm going to put two lines of code in here. The first one is to populate the str end date variable. There's a function at the bottom of the application which returns the UK date, day, month, year format. If you're using the American format, feel free to change and replace this function. The second function is to set the date in a date control. 
Strictly speaking, we don't need this one in here because when the application runs, the date control will have the current date in it anyway. However, it's a useful function to have as it allows you to set the date in a date control at any point during the application. So now that we've got that far with the code, our next task is to populate the text color dropdown. This will allow the user to select the color that they want the text to impose on top of the graphics control. So in our initialization dialog section, we want to add some text color options. There's two pieces of information needed here, the text name from the user, for example, red, white, blue, and green, and the text color. Combo boxes allow you to store information on the text which appears to the user and also a value which can be a long variable stored in the background. So when the user selects the first setting on the list, it gets the first long value. So I'm going to set up two arrays to dimension between one and four elements. One for the text color string and one for the text color number. Then we're going to populate these arrays. As they're quite small arrays, it's quite easy to use the array assign command, giving the four values that we want placed in those arrays. And we're going to set up some more variables at the beginning of our function. As we want to keep track of the item selected from the combo box, we want to keep track of the selected text color and the two arrays for the text color and the text color number. So having set these arrays up, we now have to populate the combo box and this will be using a for next loop. First of all, we will populate the text that the user gets to see by using a combo add command. This takes the parameters of the handle of the dialog, the handle of the combo box, the string value you wish to put in to the combo box, and which item on the list this is going to return. So when you're adding the first one, it would return number one. If the combo box is set to be sorted alphabetically, then when you add the very first value, it will return number one as its item. When you add the second value, it may well appear also as the first item on the list, as item one would be moved down to item two because it's now sorted. So we're trapping the item that it gets added as, because we'll need that for the next command. This is the combo box set user command. This allows us to save the value in the combo box of our color, red, white, blue, or green. So if we try running our application now, our combo box for the colors should be populated, which it is indeed. So our next task is to apply text to the top of our image. So it's back to the code again. We need to put the code underneath that button. Since the user may have several goes at actually setting this up by picking dates, our first task will be to re-add the countdown image to the graphics control. So we'll do it as we did before, we'll capture from the combo box the name that the user has selected and we will populate the graphics control with the image. Ideally, if you're doing this a lot, it would be handy to put this into a common function. Now that we have that completed, we now have to get what the user selected for the text color. And we can use the combo box get select command. It will return the item number. If the item number is zero, it means the user has yet to select one. So in that case, we'll default it to item number one. Next, we need to pull back from the combo box the user value that was previously stored for the color by using the combo box get user command and using the item number that we got from the previous command and we're saving that value to the long text color variable. Next, we want to apply a piece of text to our graphics control. So we're going to create a new function to perform that function. And we'll call that function apply countdown text, taking the parameters of the dialog handle, the graphics control handle, the end date the user has selected, and the long value of the text color. So here is the skeleton of our new apply countdown text column. The purpose of this function is to work out the number of days between the current date and the date the user has selected on the date control. It will then take that information, form up a piece of text and put it onto the graphics control. So we're going to be using the power time class. 
and we're going to declare some local variables to allow us to keep track of two power time variables, one for the current date and one for the forward date that the user has selected. We need to have a variable to store the text and we'll need to work out where on the graphics control we're actually going to be positioning this piece of text. So first of all, we will take the end date that the user has selected and we will split that up into year, month and day. Again, I'm using the UK format here as that will be the format that's been passed in to this function. Next, we're going to populate the current date and the date that the user has selected. This is using the today and the new date methods in our class. So today picks up the current date. New date picks up the date that the user has passed in as in year, month and day. We can now use the time diff method for working out the number of days between these two dates. This is a very powerful class which gives you great flexibility in working out dates. So we now want to add this text onto our graphics control and we'll do that by first using a graphics attach command to ensure that all subsequent graphics operations will be directed towards that control. We also want to set the text fairly large so it can be seen by using a graphics set font command. So we'll need to set a font up. We'll do that at the beginning of our application. So we're going to be using the font new command, a specified courier new as our font. 48 as the point size of our font. The next value 3 is a composite of bold and italic. Value 1 would be bold, value 2 would be italic, and value 3 is both bold and italic. Once the dialog has closed down, we can then do a font end command, which will free up the space used by the font. So we're also using the graphics color command, using the passed in value for the color for the foreground, and we're using at the moment minus one for the background, which means leave the background as it was. So next we're going to form up a piece of text that says x days left, x being the number of days calculated in our power time class. As the number of days can either be one, two, or possibly even three characters length, the length of our text is going to vary depending on the date selected by the user. So we need to work out just how wide this piece of text is in order to centre it in the middle of the graphics control. This can be done quite easily by using one of the graphics commands. Using the graphics command with text size x and the string containing the text you wish to put on the graphics control will return either the number of pixels or the page dialog units. Next we can work out the width of the graphics control itself by using the same approach. And after that, it's straightforward arithmetic. So we've now populated a variable called xPause. xPause will tell us exactly where we need to start printing. We can then set that value using the graphics set pause command and then print our text to the graphics control and then redraw this to the user. So let's try running the application now and see what displays. So we can set our background image. We can pick a date. We can set our text color and we can hit the apply to image button. And this displays on the screen. However, it doesn't look particularly good. Better in red. We need some way of actually removing the plain solid fill background from the text. We can do this quite easily by changing one line of code. In the graphics color command, we're using minus one. If we change this to a minus two and run our application once more, select our image, pick our date, select the text color, and apply to the image. Now the background of the text is completely transparent, making it much easier to see the text on the screen. So what we've achieved so far is we've allowed the user to pick a date, calculate the number of days between the current date and that date, display that information on the top of our graphics control. The final task is to allow the save image button to save the updated graphics control back to disk as a JPEG file. So back to the code. So at the beginning of our code, I've set up a constant to name our output file. We could of course put something on screen to allow the user to select where they wanted the file saved to and what they wanted to call it. 
but for the moment we'll just call it test.jpg. So here we are back in the callback function, our event handler. Looking at the event that is triggered when the user clicks on the create image button. So when the user clicks on our create image button, we want to save the graphics control to disk. So we've got a new function that will perform that in one of our libraries. And this new function is called save graphics control. So we try running the application now. We pick our background image. We pick our date. We pick our text color. And we apply that to the image. And if we click on the save image button, let's have a look inside our folder and see if this test JPEG has appeared. And there is our test JPEG file. And it does indeed have our text on it. So in summary, what we've achieved today is we have created a graphics control, populated it with a JPEG image, updated that JPEG image by writing text to it, and then saving that updated graphics control back to disk as a JPEG. This will give you a fair bit of flexibility in saving the images that you've created on screen, be they charts, images like this, or any other content within a graphics control. Hopefully you'll find this code useful in your applications, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching.